I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend some here with me. Today, we're going to be talking about visualization, and this isn't the first time that I've spoken about visualization here on this podcast, and certainly if you are have worked with me, you know that visualization is one of the most important and powerful tools that we have at our fingertips. Visualization is free. We can do it whenever we want. We just need the the tools. We just need the skill to be able to do it. And the reason that visualization is so powerful, the process of visualization actually rewires our brains. Did you know that when we visualize something happening, the brain actually has the same activity within it when visualizing doing that action as it does when we actually physically perform that action? I think that that is just unbelievable because that helps us to understand how powerful our thoughts are. When we think about that really at its core, our thoughts become how our brain realizes the world around us. So the fact that the brain engages in the same neurological activity when it visualizes doing an action as it does when we are physically performing that action is something that we should not take for granted and is something that we actually need to harness for our power in order to empower us, in order to get us where we want to go. This is one of the reasons that visualization is so important in our the work that I do with every single one of my clients, whether you're working with me one-on-one or in group coaching and in the Mastering Academic Applications from Scratch to Submission program, we work on visualization. And I have seen the results. When we visualize what we want for ourselves in a way that is healthy, positive, and actually helps us grow our lives actually change because our brain and the way that we consider our actions, our behaviors, and the way that we perceive ourselves actually changes. And it may not be surprising to you then that elite athletes use visualization all the time. They visualize strategy. You see this when teams are working on a whiteboard and they're visualizing the different plays and how the plays are going to go down. Even I, before I knew that visualization was a thing, I used to do it all the time. What I used to do was visualize myself taking that test, visualize myself writing that exam. What are the steps that I would go through? Okay, so I would somehow get to the location that I needed to get to, whether if I was younger, someone was driving me, or if it was school, I was taking transit. Then when I got a car, and this was around the time of law school, I would drive to school. So that's how that played out in my mind. Okay. So which route would I take? Would I get a coffee on the way? Would I not? And where usually what I would do is I would do a quick review in the car or in a really quiet place where no one would bother me in the school or the location of wherever the exam was being held. I would do a quick review and then I would find the room. I would get situated. I'd put my water down. I'd get my coffee down. I would put in my earplugs. I'm a huge fan of earplugs and I would get started and actually visualize yourself, flipping through your notes. In law school, my my exams were mostly open book, so we were allowed to use our notes. So you would visualize yourself actually working through the process of the exam, flipping through your notes, trying to imagine the scenarios that would be on the exam, for example. You might also have done this for a driving test. As you're practicing driving, you're imagining what the tester might say in the seat next to you. Or as you're on the gondola going up the ski hill, you're visualizing perhaps your route on the way back down. You're looking, okay, where, where are these hills? Where's this? Where's that? In order to situate yourself, in order to visualize where you're going to go, how you're going to get back down the hill. So we visualize things all the time. 
I used to also visualize myself when I was done school, what was I going to do? Now, if you've been here at the podcast since the beginning, you will know that my journey has changed and it has changed drastically from what I thought I was going to do way back when to now. But the visualization helped me feel empowered, helped me feel goal-oriented, and helped me see opportunity. And that's what I want to talk about next. How does visualization help us to see opportunity? Our brains have a mechanism called the reticular activating system or RAS. And by using visualization, our brains actually filter out the unfavorable the toxic, the stuff that doesn't serve us. And it allows us to absorb and ingest everything that will get us to where we want to go and beyond. This is how we build lives beyond our wildest dreams. Because I harness, in my work with you, I harness the power of the reticular activating system. And as I said, by using visualization regularly, our brains more readily see and allow and accept opportunities in our lives that help us to meet our goals. And this system, the RAS, helps us to actually become conscious, to have a conscious awareness of opportunities. Rather than focusing on what goes wrong, we focus on what goes right. And that is actually going to be the topic of the next podcast episode. So stay tuned for that. But the reticular activating system is a bundle of neurons in our brain that have several functions. One of the main functions and the main function that we'll be talking about here is that the reticular activating system functions as a gatekeeper that decides what information is brought from our subconscious into our conscious awareness. Now, that is important. Can you think about why that might be important? It's because that every day we live in this world and we are absolutely bombarded. We receive so much information now more than ever with social media, with news, with everything, with carrying our computers at our fingertips with our cell phones and our cell phones being cameras and news sources and social sources and where we store our pictures and where our emails come in and, and, and where our texts come in and a million other things that happen on our cell phones. And when we go out into the world and the, you know, including the physical world, not just our cell phones, when we go out into the physical world, we see buses, we see traffic, we see other people, we see buildings, we see our surroundings, we see signs. And so our brains would actually probably spontaneously combust if we actually consciously were aware of every single thing that we saw. Most stuff in our society that we have lived in for a long time or an extended period of time, we're used to. And so we're able to filter out the things that don't really have all that much significance in our day-to-day lives. But what if our brains didn't have this reticular activating system, and we just absorbed everything. Like I said, I think our brains would spontaneously combust and we'd be done for. But luckily we have the RAS and this helps our brains filter the information that it is receiving. Why is this important? This is important because what happens when we think about stressful situations or when we are stressed or when we are engaging in highly competitive circumstances and we have that toxic scarcity mindset that I've talked about before, what we start to see are more toxic things, more unfavorable things, more things that don't serve us. As opposed to when we start training our brain to see opportunity, to see abundance using the abundance mindset, the growth mindset, what we start to see is opportunity. And that is everything. That's everything. It is so important because once we start to train our brains to see opportunity, we help those neural connections actually connect with each other and they only strengthen and multiply over time. So it is so important that we are aware of our brain's reticular activating system because we need to know the tool that our brains use in order to form our thoughts. Using our brain's RAS 
is really important because we help our brains to figure out what is important to us and what is not, what is serving us and what is not, what is helping us move forward, grow and advance and what is not. So the power of visualization and remember visualization has the same effect on our brains as if we are actually doing that action. And so when we activate our reticular activating system with visualization, we actually trick our brains into thinking that we are actually doing that activity. And our brains begin to absorb that kind of information beginning at the subconscious level and shifting into the conscious level the more we do it. So how do we harness the power of the reticular activating system using visualization? We begin by asking ourselves really important questions. And in my experience as a student, as an admissions committee member, as a professor, as a lawyer, and in my role here as your advancement coach and strategist, and using the skills that I have learned from my coaches over the years who have helped me learn and be able to use the power of visualization formally over the years, I am able to be very specific with the questions that I ask you, my clients, anybody that I work with when it comes to visualization exercises that we do together. And this is how I start my relationships with my clients is by doing a visualization exercise because we tend not to ask ourselves these questions naturally. Naturally, we tend to be in a state where we are within our four walls, whether it's at home or in the office or at school or wherever it is. And that is all we see. And what I am doing here is I am bringing the power of visualization to students. What I am doing is bringing the power of mindset to students, to university students, because these resources just don't seem to be there for university students. And I know that they are valuable and powerful for non-students who seek them out. And here I'm making them available to students, university students in a way that is useful directly to them because I have been doing this for so long since 2015. I've been a student for even longer and I serve my clients and I know how to facilitate success. So the first thing that we do is we ask really specific questions questions. We ask really specific questions that make you think about your life. Things like, what do you look like in, say, five years? How do you feel in five years? Who is around you in five years? Where are you in that time? Are you indoors or outdoors in this visualization? Who is around you? Do you have a pet? Do you have family? Are there friends around you? Do you have colleagues around you in this visualization? And some of my clients actually tell me really powerful things. Firstly, that every time they do the visualization exercise with me, that they visualize different things, but it's not different. It's building upon the foundation that they built previously. And they always, their visualization always grows, always progresses. So where there was no detail before, there's now detail. There's, there are facial expressions. There are identities that are attributed to people around them. I had a really powerful visualization exercise with a client just a few days ago. And they told me of these circumstances in their visualization when we were talking about the kind of population that they were serving and how they felt in there every single day at work. They said, I see this person and they explained the identity of this person, exactly what they looked like. They're down to their cheekbones, their eyes, their mouth, their everything about them. And I said, that is a crazy amount of detail. This person and the client told me that this person has appeared in like two or three of the visualizations that we did in that same day. So we ask different questions and we learn about really what the client wants in the different areas of their life, whether it be home or at school or at work. And this client said they kept flashing back to this person in different circumstances and they could see their face. They could see everything about them, what they were wearing, their facial expression. The second that my client walked into the room in this visualization. And I said, that is 
That amount of detail is unbelievable. And we were talking about this for quite some time. And I said, do you know this person? They said, I have never met this person. I've never seen this person before. This is the first time I've ever seen this person. And it was in my visualization. And they kept coming back. They kept coming back. And I have chills now talking about it. And I had chills in the moment. And my client (laughs) knows that we had a good laugh about that. But it was so real. And the thing is that the power of that visualization helped them to understand how they felt in the moment serving their ideal client or their ideal patient. The reason that that's so important is because it helped to form other areas of their visualization. It helped them to understand how they felt when they went home after they felt as though they helped this person during the day, how they felt unwinding at night, gearing up for the next day. And so these details have really helped my client to form their feelings about their future as well and what they're aspiring to. And one of the most rewarding things that I heard from this client after the visualization experience is that they went back to doing their test prep and they scored significantly higher in their next practice test for their standardized test simply because they were able to harness the power of the visualization and the opportunity that they felt inside rather than focusing on the competition. And that for me, just an unbelievably powerful outcome basically immediately. Like this happened in one day. And so I know the power of visualization over time, but this happened in one day. They actually saw a marked increase in their, in their standardized test results. And that to me was just so exciting. And I was so, so proud of them. And if you're that client and if you're listening, I am proud of you. I am so proud of you. All of my clients do absolutely amazing work. They are open and honest and vulnerable in these situations where we come together to support each other and where we go through these visualization exercises. And I just am so honored to be a part of their journeys. And I'm so grateful for that. So I know that's a bit of a tangent, but I just, I have to just, you know, without my clients, I wouldn't be here. And so I'm just so grateful for them. So thank you as a, as a small tangent here. So We want to be specific when we are doing our visualization exercises. I even ask about what their hair looks like in their visualization exercises. And some clients say, it looks like I got a haircut. It looks like I have a completely different haircut in five years. And I think that that's powerful too, because with different haircuts comes shifts in identity and shifts in how we perceive ourselves and how we want the world to perceive us, how we feel comfortable with ourselves. And so then we can do that work to say, okay, did you like that haircut that you saw? And what could have led up? to that change in style. Other clients tell me that they're wearing gorgeous clothes or they're wearing scrubs or they're wearing their lawyer robes in court. And so really being able to visualize what you're wearing down to what kind of shoes you're wearing. Are you wearing heels or flats or loafers or running shoes or, you know, some form of like slip on Crocs or something for some professional roles? What what are you wearing? Because what you're wearing garners this entire conversation about, okay, what are you doing then that you can be wearing that? What has led, what decisions that you are making today lead to this appearance, lead to this, to wearing these clothes, wearing these shoes, having this haircut, feeling the way that you feel in this moment. And then we also talk about, of course, how they feel in that moment. How do you feel about what it is that you're wearing? How do you feel about the way that you feel in that visualization, who about who is around you. And that's a really powerful one because if you visualize your future and certain people are there that make you feel bad, then we have to talk about that because people who don't serve you also don't serve your future. And you can do everything in your power to support other people. You can do everything in your power to support other people and be there for them. But you also need to be able to protect your mental energy and your time. And when we are bogged down with things like drama, when we're bogged down with other people's influence, perhaps bad influence when it comes to bad habits, we need to really check ourselves and we need to give ourselves a reality check, which is hard. I've done it. My clients do it. And it is one of the most 
powerful decisions that a person can make is taking control back of their time. Because, and I've said this before, if you don't control your time and your energy, somebody else will. And that is always true. So the importance of visualization is that we figure out what it is that you want. And the visualization exercise helps us to grow. We start out often small. I remember when I did my first visualization exercise, I was thinking so small. I was thinking so small in terms of my personal growth, in terms of my business growth, in terms of my professional growth, I was thinking in a very traditional way. And now if you've been working with me, you know that this, for example, this community that I'm creating at Apply Yourself is very non-traditional because it doesn't give in to the current path dependency of the institutions that we are often reliant upon, the systems, structures, institutions that we're reliant upon in society for some of our advancement. The revolutionary thing about apply yourself, the revolutionary characteristics of apply, about apply yourself are that we don't subscribe to the scarcity mindset, to competition, to competitive nature and competitive based behavior. Instead, we subscribe to support, to abundance, understanding that there is room for everybody and there is room for everyone to grow together with support, with help, with collaboration and strategy that I help my clients with. This is important because my vision and my mission for Apply Yourself has also grown. It started, as you know, if you listen to episode two, it started in Starbucks, right? Where I was writing my dissertation and other coffee sippers would come up to me and say, oh, what are you working on? And so I'm working on my dissertation. And they say, oh, I'm writing my grad school applications or my law school or med school applications. Could you help me? Because there are all these test prep services out there, but the actual content, the substantive content of the application that the committees read is really a service that's lacking. Certainly it's a support that is lacking. And I began to help people without even really thinking about it. I didn't even charge for it. And these people would come back. They would know the table that I sat at. They would know roughly what days I was there. And they would sort of come and they'd look out of the corner of their eye, see how busy I was. They would come up and they'd say, hey, you know, I wrote another paragraph. Could you let me know how what you think? And then, as you know, I was on admissions committees at graduate and professional schools and job search promotion and tenure committees. And I really got to understand the substance of what needed to be in applications and how it needed to be communicated in order for an admissions committee or job search committee to actually be stopped in their tracks by your material, to actually have a compelling story to tell that hits on all of the thematic characteristics that the school might be looking for. And so that's how it started. That's how it started. And the more I thought about it and the more I worked with my clients and, you know, at that time I was doing house calls and I was working at Starbucks and people would just come see me. And now Apply Yourself has an office and we have a signature program called Mastering Academic Applications from Scratch to Submission. We have one-on-one coaching programs. We have group coaching programs. We work with students and their families if that's right for them. And so exciting and I can't reveal anything just yet, but Apply Yourself is growing. We are growing and this is 100%, 100% as a result of my visualization exercises that I do daily daily. And it happens naturally now, all day, every day. Even in my subconscious, I'm visualizing what is coming next and what is beyond next by like years, by like 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. What are we going to be doing? How are we going to be serving the community? How are we going to be serving students, university students, their families, in order to help our clients build lives beyond their wildest dreams? And what does that take? What is step number one? realizing what it is that you want. And realizing what it is that you want often comes through visualization. What do you want that you don't have? And then the next step is the question, how? How are we going to get there? Not, will I get there? Or what if I fail? The question is how? And that is a really important next step because by asking how, rather than will I, won't I? Will I or won't I 
is a yes or no question. It's a buy, you, it requires a binary response, yes or no. And then you're stuck. Okay. Yes, I will. Or no, I won't. And then you're done. Like that's it. But when we replace the will I with how we have to take action, the next step is action. And the only way that we can identify not only what we want, which changes over time and grows and develops over time, but also we visualize ourselves taking the actions, then we're really, really working on ourselves and on that life beyond our wildest dreams. Now, a really quick tip here. If you have trouble answering the how, you know, maybe you know what you want or you have some little inkling of what it is that you want. You're not quite sure about all the details and you ask yourself how and your answer is, I have no clue. Take yourself out of the equation. Take yourself out of the equation and, you know, make up some avatar or use somebody, you know, perhaps somebody else that you know and slot them into your place. Slot them into your place. And instead of saying, how will I do this? In these circumstances, slot that other person in and say, how would they, what would I suggest to this person if they were asking this question? And suddenly the path becomes very clear because your approach becomes objective. Your approach becomes more objective and you're not thinking about, oh, what if I feel insecure? Often what a year is, but what if I fail? What if I fail? And that is a question that just stops us. And I'm going to be talking about that more in the next episode. So I'm not going to get into that here. But what I will say is imagine someone else making this decision that you're making about how you will move forward. What is the next action or the set of actions that you're going to take? And what would you suggest? What what would be your first step? Don't worry about the whole picture. Don't worry about the next 20 years. What would be the next step? And with consistency and by taking small but mighty steps, because small steps are powerful and everything is small steps. Let's not kid ourselves. Everything is comprised of small steps. So when you take those small steps and you really break down larger, more what seem like impossible actions into their constituent parts, I promise you, I promise you that you will be able to see a path forward and you will be excited you'll be able to see a path forward and those steps won't feel so daunting. Break things up into small steps. Next, I want to tell you, don't be afraid to be emotional, to have feelings when you are doing your visualization. I will tell you that I have become very emotional when I'm doing my visualization because I am able to see the kind of life that I want, the kind of family that I want, where I want to be, how I want to bring people together, what kind of life I will have. Not I can have, not I may have, I will have, okay? And you can too. By not suppressing those feelings, we are actually firstly showing gratitude for that life that we want. And second, we are allowing our brains to also feel how we may feel in that future situation, making those neural connections for us. And so we want to allow ourselves to feel however it is that we feel when we do our visualization exercises. I'll tell you that my clients often get very emotional. They bring Kleenex, I'll leave, I'll put it that way. And that to me shows that they are in it to win it. If you can be vulnerable during this visualization process, and it doesn't mean that you have to cry or, or, or you can absolutely, if that is what is, is how you feel. Sometimes you may, sometimes you may not, or you may not at all, or you may every single time. There's, it really is, is 100% based on you and how you feel. Regardless of how you feel, allow yourself to feel it. Okay. Allow yourself to feel it. A lot of my clients say that they are scared to feel during these visualization exercises. And what it comes down to is they're actually afraid to feel hope. They're actually afraid to feel hope. And the reason that I think that this is so powerful, and I'm going to talk about this in the next episode, is because we need hope to have a visualization that can have any effect on the way that we live and on the choices that we make. Hope drives us to grow, to develop our skills, to become more skilled, to become better people, to become people who have an impact. And so it is so important that we are, that we allow ourselves to hope. My clients also say, well, I'm afraid 
to hope because what if I fail? I think that that's a really important question because when we let fear stop us, we get stuck. We get stagnant and we actually prevent ourselves from growing. So what I would say is allow yourselves to be emotional, to feel things when you're doing your visualization. And if you feel a certain way, whatever it is, trust me, it's normal. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you if you get emotional thinking about something that you really, really want. Let yourself feel it, whatever it is, and visualize yourself in the moment that you want to achieve, in the moments that you want to achieve. Those neural connections will in your brain will happen and you will achieve lives beyond your wildest dreams if you do this. Last, use visualization often. Use it often because it keeps your goals at the front of your brain's conscious and unconscious awareness. Some people recommend that you do visualization every day. Some people recommend that you do it twice a day or three or four times a day. Others recommend that you do it at other various intervals. What I would say is do it in a concentrated way at least once a week with a pen and paper in front of you. That doesn't mean that you have to write everything out, although if that works for you, you absolutely can. But what it means is that you engage in the visualization process, asking yourselves all of these important, specific questions. And actually, I do a visualization exercise in a previous podcast episode. So you can go to that episode, which we'll link in the show notes, and you can use that to guide you. But I would recommend that you do this work at least once a week. So do your visualization and then have that pen and paper next to you and just, it doesn't even have to be legible, just scribble down after you're done the visualization, everything that you visualize so that it's on paper, you've done a brain dump and you're processing it. You're processing it and you're making those connections. And then in between those visualizations that you're doing once a week, I would revisit your visualizations every single day. For me now, as I said, it happens unconsciously. It just happens. I just think about it while I'm driving, while I'm working even, while I'm even recording this podcast. I'm thinking about all the opportunity that I have available to me that I don't even know exists yet. Okay. I'm thinking about it. And so, and this is another point that I wanted to mention is that when you visualize opportunity and you prepare your mind and your connections neurally to accept opportunity, you start to see it everywhere. You start to see it everywhere. And all of those toxic thoughts about, I can't, I can't, I can't, what if, what if, what if, turn into, oh, I could do that. Oh, maybe that's for me. Hey, what about that? Or I saw that. I wonder if I could do it. And then your next action is answering the question, how? How could I do that? So by visualizing, you see opportunity in front of you. You prepare your brain to accept opportunity that's in front of you. That's how, quite honestly, that is how I make fast decisions. I make very quick decisions quite often based on my intuition, based on my gut, because I've already visualized this circumstance happening so many times that when I see something, I say, yep, that's going to get me there. Or nope, that's not for me. No, thank you. And so it is so important that We harness the power of visualization and I'm with you on this. I am with you on this every step of the way. So remember what we talked about today. We talked about your reticular activating system. We talked about the effects that that has on your rewiring and wiring the connections in your brain to more readily allow opportunities in order to meet your goals, which you're setting through visualization and exceeding them because your visualizations will grow over time. And then we talked about how to do that. And that is by being specific with your visualizations, by allowing yourself to feel the emotions that you feel, whatever they are when they come up and to do this frequently. And I guarantee you, your lives will change. Thank you so much for joining me and see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. 
If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at Apply Yourself Global and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.